All right, everybody, welcome to Much Ado About Dota. As we return here, we've been away for a little bit, but uh, don't worry about that. We're back, of course. My name is Mont. Thanks for joining us. Of course, our other co-host today, we've got Aoi2000 from Team Dignitas. Kurt, how are you doing, sir? Hi. Good, thanks. Of course, and moving on, we've got our resident Ellie Golden over Blitz. How are you? See, it's weird doing intros, but hello. <laughs> of course, I'm we're sorry my words because I just woke up. My bad. Uh, we also have our special guest from Team Complexity, the Complexity Manager, Chad. How are you? I'm doing good. I still need a team. For those of you out there, hit me up. We'll discuss that a little bit later. And of course, to round it all up, got Bulba, of course, just finishing his matchup between uh, Team Liquid and Mouse for the Defense 3. And uh, you must be feeling pretty good right now, man. How are you? What the fuck? What the fuck was that, dude? <laughs> Can somebody fill me in? I'm so confused. Yeah. Oh, you weren't there. Oh my god. No, I was just I was asleep. What? So literally, what happened? Literally, literally just craziest. Twenty minutes ago was the ending of one of history's greatest matches, Dota Two. Not even an exaggeration. It was, it was it was pretty clowny. It was pretty crazy. I only saw the end of the game, but I mean, I had gotten home and I just saw you guys going to town, just trying to hang on. And eventually, you didn't even go for the racks. You just went straight for the well. It was the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. All right. So that keyed me in into nothing. Is there anybody going to tell me what you happened? You had to be there. You had they were, to be there. They were, well. they were all but what? One ranged racks down? Or did they keep the melee racks up at the end? Oh, there were two, two lanes completely down. They wiped their opponents twice in two team fights, and then they just blitzed down middle and ra and throned. There's a throne race at the very end as well. Well done, Sam. They beat a phantom lancer. Oh, you, you need to pee. Yeah, you understand now? Yeah, yeah, I get it now. It all makes yeah, sense. There you go. <laughs> that was like the most stressful like shit ever. Like that was so demoralizing at 30 or 40 minutes in. We just like we we totally messed up in team fights. We weren't playing well at all. I don't know why, and we just like, yeah. So the 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 tri lane we like we kind of lost it top, and then they had like a bunch of team fights and stuff. And this PL was like insanely farmed, not AUI level farm, but still still up there, you know. And you know it was like let's let's do it. And then Quark's like, Yolo, let me buy a a freaking rapier, <laughs> and then. And then we're just marching top, we're marching top, we're flat canning it, we're ulting it, whatever the hell Gyro does with his ultimate. And then we have like a really clowny fight where he TVs in, the pa I mean the, the, the panda blinks in, and then I hex him and then we kill him. And then we also kill Black. And then we're like, okay, then they go do Aegis, they go do Roshan. And then we're okay, we're like, I think that's, by that time Korag has his rapier and then TC also has his MKB. So we, we actually do decent risk PL illusions. It's not like totally gone. And we have Shadow Demon as like taking his illusions. And then it was like, I think they got the Aegis and then we killed, they were getting ready to come up. And we had a, we had a really good ward in the lane. So we saw they were gonna cut like, we saw them a group up. And then we're like, we were like, screw this. They're just gonna keep sieging us with PL illusions. We might as well just go up. So I had a four staff and a blue. So I saw the Panda and uh, there was no, I, I didn't see the PL. I think they recalled the PL or it came from like the side or something. But so I, we just blinked in and um, I blinked in and I hexed the panda and then we killed the panda. And then the PL, I, I died in that process. I think me, me and um, Fluff died and Mike. But we killed the PL. We took, we, got, we also got the Aegis. And then we knew he didn't have buyback because he bought back to go do Roshan. So we were like, okay, whatever the hell, we're just going to go mid. And Peel was down, and then Panda blinked in, I think, and we, we killed the Clockwork and we killed the Kotal. Panda has his like, ultimate on Quark, but it didn't really matter. And then we knew that Peel was going to backdoor bottom. He bought bots. And uh, I was, he, uh, Fluff came back in time, and we just killed him, and that was over. But what the hell was that? Ike's Mike tweeted, easy game. <laughs> Typical Mike. <laughs> oh, man. And I mean... We were like, we literally just were like yelling in mumble. Like, I... Like, what the f hell was that? I'm glad you guys were yelling. You guys better be yelling. The chat was yelling. Was, the chat was flooded. That was, was like, holy shit. I, I just was like spamming random shit in chat because I didn't know what the hell to do. 
Then I'm just like spam like by freaking forty people on Steam and shit. So yelling no, USA. Yeah, yeah, no, that was a ridiculous game. Like Chappie and I were watching it and while we were waiting here in the lobby and I was just like, What? Are you serious right now? Or the rapier was like that's when I knew. I was like, Yeah, okay, a rapier. They just need to win some fights. No, that, and the clockwork had a really, really good hook mid in the mid fight, I think it was on our tier three. But he got like three of us in the cogs. And that was like it was really annoying. And I I I know they had a clockwork, but I I I always prefer going blink regardless, cause you need the blink to push, uh, split push. Like the four staff isn't worth it. It's too much gold, and you need the blink dagger. And I think we had one four staff on fluff. So, but regardless, they were like, they crushed us early game, like in all their fights and stuff. We just played badly early on, but yeah. Do you think that was your best series that you've played, or at least the most dramatic series that you've played in the past, like, I don't know, however many series you've won in a row? Do you think that was one of the, was that the pinnacle? It was, it was exhausting. The, the second game was already kind of exhausting. We, we didn't do, like, the stuff we're supposed to. We let them do what they want. And the third game, we, we also let them do what they want, but we had, uh, like, we had Gyro this time, and we had, um, Nakes and we had Tinker, so we had kind of a, like a three core, and late game we couldn't still beat like PL. Like PL isn't PL was obviously like annoying as hell, but also I felt they we core and go BKB and they didn't have any disable versus that, so that was like kind of weird for them. I'm still oh, yeah. in shock. That game was ridiculous. Yeah. Well, the the best <laughs> thing is that it's it's not it was just a great game in itself, but it keeps the 17 series win streak alive. That's why it's so big, and it's it keeps you guys in the and it keeps you guys in the defense as well to your rival. I think we were really demoral. Yeah, we were demoralized as hell. Like halfway through that, but then we're like, whatever. We can still hold this. And rapier is like an item. Po Po as a hero can't go rapier, but obviously gyro can go it. So uh, even though Po like is decent, like it's hard to say gyro counters Po because it's it's only during flat cannon where you can actually do anything to the illusion. But in that flat cannon, if there's a rapier damage, it's insane. Like, you just kill everyone. Yep. Oh. All right, well, man, I can say congratulations. That game was absolutely outstanding. But And it must have been tough in the earlier games, but uh, you guys did it. Moving on. 17-game win streak, that's pretty amazing. So, congrats on that. Um, but I want to move on. I want to talk about the No Tide Hunter drama, which I'm sure everybody's aware of. I first heard about it on an Eternal Envy stream. He just started talking about how uh, Loda had essentially kicked him from No Tide Hunter. I want to get your guys' thoughts on really both perspectives. You know, coming from Eternal Envy side, do you think what he did was right? Do you think that it's okay that he did it on stream? Um, what do you guys think about that? Start with uh, Sam. Do you have any opinions on that? Um, I spoke a lot to Envy, and he's, he was really depressed, like, I, I, f I felt really bad for him, because he was the most, um, he was the most dedicated player on that team by far, and they, like, blindsided him, and instead of, they were obviously running into problems, but it wasn't his fault, like, he was trying to help them out, and all that bullshit about language and stuff, I, I disagree with totally, it's, like, the stupidest thing, and he he led the team he told me he told everyone what to do in most cases and i guess they took offense to that but he said if he didn't do that they weren't saying anything at all so he was forced to do it so i have no idea what was happening but it was it just like he he talked like it was just a power struggle between him and loda that was it and it was either him or loda and i think the sponsor was there for loda only mm -hmm. Like, that was the main reason that the sponsor was there for. So, obviously, they're going to stay with Loda because they want the sponsor. And I think that was basically it. So, it was either him and Loda and, yeah. That's, that's such a poor position to be in. But, yeah, yeah. And uh, I don't know if you guys... I mean, for those of you out there that don't know about the drama, somehow, if you don't know about it, you can check out... I think Eternal Envy posted a Team Liquid thread about it. So, if you want to head over there and check that out. 
Um, I actually found out about the stream, and he also posted a someone posted a Reddit throat uh, Reddit thread about it happening. So, um, any other thoughts about Eternal Envy and the way uh, he was sort of just shoved out the door from uh, No Tide Hunter? I, no Tide Hunter is actually. And surprisingly quiet about their decision. I haven't really heard anything from Lodo or Aki yet. I mean, they made a statement to Eternal Envy, but they haven't really reached the public yet. Do any of you guys think that they need to come out and defend themselves? Uh, is there another side to the story? There's always two sides to a story, right? And I don't think how they kicked Envy was right, but if as a team they thought it had to be done, then we should at least wait for their side of the story to come up before we start, like, completely criticizing. I thought how they did it was complete bullshit, though. You can't just kick someone out like that, especially when he formed a team. Yeah, he made the team. Well, I mean, would you have preferred they all just left then? No, it, it's, it's you talk to him first, and then you say, if this doesn't change, then we're going to have to make changes. And if that still doesn't work, then you talk about removing someone. But Loda was approaching people, from what I've heard, he approached EGM at least two weeks before, in a scrim, asking if he wanted to form an all Swedish team. And Eternal and Loda talked to everyone before Eternal Envy, other than just having five people in the Skype chat. Mm, I still think that it's not fair to just like completely, you know, bash Loda or the people on NTH without hearing their side. I know because it, most likely because of their sponsor pressure. They're not gonna like say anything to like outright flame him or to contradict him. Because it's not worth it for them, but I don't necessarily think that it a hundred percent went they down. Think, you think like, how they did it was right? Because I, I just said no. That I, don't, I don't. Bash well, I don't. Until you I don't think. Opinion. Yeah, I don't think. Uh, um, I don't think they should have done it like that. But you still don't know a hundred percent what happened, right? So should wait a little bit. Like Reddit and Team Liquid is going a little bit crazy right now. Because they're only hearing one, they're only getting information from one side. Like they could have seen it in a different way. Well, I mean, unless but it's hard to say it. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, if you if you don't think like a team's gonna work, like what better way is it gonna happen? Like, I um, I think okay. I'm friends with everyone in that thing, so it's a bit weird of a situation because so I don't want to flame confirm, anybody. So, like, was it only one person that had a problem with him, or the entire team? I think the entire team had some issue with him. Like, they had an issue with the way that he was, like, doing things. Like, it's easy for somebody, you know, for somebody like Envy, when his position say, like, nobody would talk, but I don't know if... I know personally for me, if I have an issue with somebody on a team, like, my need to want to talk to them kind of, like, dramatically decreases. But... At the, you know, at the end of the day, I don't speak for anybody on NTH, so... It's just a rough way. I mean, yeah, I think we should. I think we have to hear the rest of Tatterner's story, but at the same time, it's just like, you know, do did they talk with Envy before they made the decision? Like, just like, I feel like they could have maybe just done things a little bit different by just like saying, okay, well, here's the problem. Here's what we need to fix. Just like having meetings, just discuss and like. That's that's how you become, I think, a good Dota team is just discussing problems and things like that. I mean, I correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, I this is coming from a caster's perspective, so I honestly don't know as much as you guys do. So it's just open like... communication is always a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're right. I mean, it, it just seemed kind of screwy the way that it happened. That's but... that's the way. That's the, my opinion. Like, I'm not gonna single out Loda. I, I don't know what. Obviously, his t if his team really wanted him to stay, they would have convinced Loda to let him on. But and since he left, they all must have had some kind of feeling that they didn't want him to stay. They wanted EGM, but though I guess the way they handled it, I don't know the full way. But obviously, Envy, the the way he acts is um, he uh, he's like blunt a lot of the time. Like you can see when he was on the stream, and he was just like telling people the entire story, and he was like blunt about it and all. But and he wasn't really afraid to share it. So you know who it's hard for us to know. Hi, who? Fluff and stuff. You gotta have a receptive team, though. Am I right? Yeah, you gotta have a receptive team. So, yeah. then, are you are you saying that N NTH was not receptive to Envy? Oh, definitely. I definitely think there's a different there's different degree of of ego bruising going on. Like, yeah. I mean, regardless of whether or not Eternal Envy need to leave or if the team's better off is completely, I think, 
useless to even discuss. It's just the manner in which he was removed. Like, maybe they are better off. Maybe it was a good decision that he be removed, but you, there's a right way to do it and a, a wrong way to do it. And it just seems like, you know, they, they did, they did it the wrong way, really. I mean, there's, there's, you can kick somebody off of a team without somebody being extremely depressed, butthurt, or offended. I, I mean, there's a right so. way to do it. I don't think there's a right way to kick someone off a team. I think you're always going to have so the person depressed. But I think yeah, there's a better way sure, than what they're they gonna did. They're going to be depressed, but they're not going to feel yeah. inclined to write a blog post about it. If, it uh, there's, if there's that much shadiness going on, which there apparently was, if you believe even half of what Eternal Envy writes, no, um, yeah. you know, then you're going to write something about it because you feel people need to know. And that's a different discussion as well, whether or not he should have done that or not, but still. What Envy said especially is that the problem he was was that they sh he was blindsided and yeah he felt exactly. they didn't give him they he felt they didn't give him enough time to prove himself again and when obviously the the reasons for their losses was not his fault like he obviously wasn't playing as well as he was in dreamhack but no one on their team was like playing that well it's that's like score. right but that's like, like so irrelevant almost like just open communication is is all that needs to be happening like Obviously, you know what it really feels like? It feels like it was just a coup for power. It just That's what it feels like. And that's probably how he feels, too. Like, he was just cut down, backstabbed, and that's what it looks like. Yeah. So, wait, I, I have another question regarding this. Do you think that if the rest of the team was, let's say, if they spoke, you know, like, perfect English or if they were American or North American, do you think it would have been different because there's more open lines of communication? Because... If you're going across the language barrier, it's obviously a little bit more difficult, right? Like, so maybe that's another reason why. I know that's, they they said that was one of the reasons why I think and uh, Loda Araki did in one of their posts to him. So maybe like I'm not trying to like say that you know they're completely not at fault, but that could be something to think about. Mm. At least in my opinion. I think it's just I was a bad excuse. Yeah, I, I don't buy it really. I mean, they all this one of their. It's not their first language, but it's not like they're American. Like, let's be real. It's not like they're American. They had to go out of their way to learn English. Everyone is taught English in in their country, at least. It's required. It's like taking language or, or math. I mean, it is it is a required class. So I, I personally just don't really... I don't, I don't think that's a real valid excuse to, to want to hold it against Envy. All right. Sad. Absolutely. Can I ask you a question, Sam? So, like, for most of the teams you've been on, if you've had an issue with somebody, can you honestly say, like, you went up to them and, like, had an open line of communication with them and said, I don't think your play is up to, sp like, speed. Like, if you're not going to change it, we're going to kick you soon. It's always been, um, I have an issue with you. I talked with some of the other people on the team. They agree. Sorry, this isn't going to work. Yeah, well, that's the I wrong way to do that it. Because I yeah, haven't done this. What? I've just, yeah, that. that is so how it's said, if you don't done. fix your play, you're going to get typically done. It's wrong. Yeah, I know, I know you have Kurt, but like 90% of the teams, that's how it's done. Like that, I'm not saying it's the right way, but like that is well then, yeah. Go that out. is He's the way like, that it it that it mainly happens. In dysfunctional teams, yeah, it's immature, you know, socially inept kids. That's how they deal with stuff. Sure, that's not how it's supposed. To, that's not how it would be done in a real professional air like setting i mean but all right that's a completely different topic but i guess it's just a, a, a debate on how it should be done versus how it actually is done most of the time and i completely agree that's how it is done it's unfortunate though how will you have some experience with snake king right on this subject yeah. what was it like with that because i talked i talked if he couldn't every... change his schedule then he would get kicked and he got kicked He's on all day, every day, though. I don't understand. I play with him all the time. Do you ever scrim? I don't scrim, no. No. Do you know his schedule? Yeah, he can. Uh, he's on every. He can't play in the mornings, morning. right? He can't. He can't. I think you guys wanted to play at 9 a.m., but he can only be on by 11, right? Yeah, and then we, when we wake up at 11, we get zero scrims in. Is this PST? Uh, PST. Big. Okay, that's that's actually like, two p.m. EST. You don't get any scrims on. 
you, you really don't. You need to you get, get it one by if you're lucky. You need at least you need nine AM PST. That's yeah. like when every team scrims. Like we kick snaking because of schedule, and no, we told him that. And we kicked them, and he still went on his stream and talked about it when we told him not to. So that's why I said I don't think there's a way to do it without someone doing anything. Because honestly, we took so many steps to try to keep him in. That's rough. I, mean, I think it's a different that's situation, those, though. Yeah, that that's a different situation. I think it it, it's more. It's it's less about it's less about your playing and more about just trying to get your schedule fixed. I think it's two different situations. I think that what you guys were discussing is that like. Well, so wait, wait, so so, my, but my situation was the best possible situation we went ahead of time. It wasn't because of anything really like personal or anything like that. Right. Best possible scenario, and he still went on stream, talked about it in public, stuff like that. So even in the best possible scenario, people are still going to get hurt because you're losing a part of your life. Like when you join a professional Dota 2 team, it's such a big part of your life. Like I spend the majority of my time on Dota 2 and I have a lot of stuff to do. So in any given worst situation, you're going to have worse stuff where people get more hurt, right? So Chappie's point about if you do it properly, then people will not get butt hurt is sort of, um, I, don't, I don't know if that's a valid point here. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if there's a way you can do it without getting like butt hurt. I think people are going to be sad regardless, and they're going to want to talk about it. I mean, it's, it sucks. You're like on a pro Dota two team, and all of a sudden you're not because a situation doesn't work. That's like, that would feel so shitty for me if that actually ever happened. But like, what, what the way like, but the way that the other teams are going about it, it it sort of limits like these things from happening. Like with Eternal Envy, he might have not have posted like a huge blog about it if they actually just had an open line of communication in the first place. He just said, okay, this isn't working. Obviously. We're gonna try to like like you said, Kurt. Like if you if you talk and try to take every possible precaution to make it work, then it's gonna work. But like unfortunately. It just didn't happen that way. So obviously you have him doing all these blog posts and stuff like that. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing. Like he kind of the way they kicked him out. I, uh, I think Ed B would have but... posted blog post regardless. Really? Well, that's pure yes. speculation. There's no way that you can know that. No, obviously, it's pure speculation was... that he wouldn't too. And like I don't understand. Yeah, it is. But like, I mean, the uh, do you guys even like talk to Envy? It. Like that's how he is. He'll do something like that, won't he? I'm neutral. Like that's... he likes to be transparent. Like that's just part of him. And I don't think it's a bad thing that he posted a blog post either. Well, it's up to him. Anyways. Hey, if you get fired from a job, like, and no matter how well it's done, you're still going to gripe about it, right? Like, they can do it professionally and say, like, oh, we don't have enough room for you, yeah, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, of course. Uh, but, I mean, like, what's your, what's your point? I mean, you're, no matter what, you're going to be offended by it. Like, that's just the way Dota is. Like, no matter how much well, open mean, line of communication like just... you have. It's not that there's just offended and unoffended. There's a huge area in between that is obviously going to be determined on the method that you're, or the way that you were let go. All right, it's, if you it's were whatever. backstabbed. Uh, I don't think so. When something that big a part of your life is just removed, I don't think it, they care how nicely it's done. Well, I mean, he is like a whole bunch of different facts that go into in this. His, uh, in his, you know, in his post, he was talking about how. He straight up didn't like it, you know, not not didn't like it, but didn't like the way that they went about it. Do you think he would have, I mean, you know what? Maybe just, he would still blog, but he wouldn't be, he wouldn't, he wouldn't say that, would he? He wouldn't say, oh, I didn't like, I don't like the way they went about it, if they didn't go about it in that way. He, maybe, he also sure, said that uh, Loda, like, at least Loda came up to talk to me after and stuff like that, and I don't blame Loda and Aki, like, Envy's just straightforward like that. He would have made a blog, and he would have wrote about other stuff there. Yeah, did, did, did this turn into, like... Whether or not he should have made a blog, or whether or not. Well, that was your point, right? Like, if 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 it's done correctly, then no one will get hurt, and there won't be any blog posts, and no. everything will be rainbow and sunshines. That wasn't definitely wasn't my point. My point was simply that I don't believe, and if I were, for example, if I were their manager, I definitely would not approve of the way that it went down. Anyways, enough about that. The drama is drama, and we can't really get uh, another opinion until we see uh, Lotus side, of course, the rest of No Titer's side of the story. So we'll wait to see what actually happens with that and with Eternal Envy in regards to, you know, where he's going to go for a new team and stuff like that. I want to move on to talking about up-and-coming teams and uh, players and how to, get imp how to improve your team play and how to get recognized. And um, I don't know if you guys were watching, but... Uh, of course, uh, former team uh, Gats, though, 
Uh, they disbanded, and with sex last night or the Sunday evening cup series, there was a team, uh, Team Lust, which actually had a bunch of really good players that had RTZ, it had KZZ, it had, um, it had Lust, it had Snaking, and it had Soli. And it was a really good team. It was really like, and it just made me wonder, like, you know, are there. I feel like the North American scene is starting to flourish a little bit. Um, I don't know if you feel the same, and, and Chappie, I don't know how much you follow the competitive uh, NA amateur scene, but, uh, you know, what what do you look for, essentially, when you're looking for teams? Desire, dedication, commitment, above everything else. Availability. Skill and mechanical ability and stuff like that is actually probably the least important thing when you're trying to find a team. Look at Team Fire. They were... Just a extremely dedicated group of people, and they are now they you know they made a huge run with Hall, and then look at what they're doing now. It's just it's purely just that really availability that it, you know willingness to actually improve your craft and stuff like that. And there are a lot of players in the NA scene that are talented, but there's really not a whole lot that have all that. There's not a whole lot of people that are like take Artizi for example. He's he's in high school. That's unfortunate really because you know he is pretty much in, incapable we were just talking about earlier how you know you want to scrim 9 a.m. about approximately in the morning you can't do that so no matter how amazing Artesi is that's a that's a problem that teams have to address and it's it's a problem that sponsors have to work with as well so on that point do you think that somebody in high school or any like, it, like for example, with that team, they had Snaking and they had RTZ on the same team. Those are, you know, people in high school. Is there any way that you would think about picking up a team that uh, had commitment, they had dedication, they had the victory to their name? Would you pick them up if, even if their screwing reg regiment wasn't necessarily as rigorous as some other teams like Dignitas and, of course, Team Liquid? Um, would you go down that route? I would consider it if they were all at least relatively on the same schedule. But if there's four people that can play at 9 a.m. or three people that can play at 9 a.m. with all the good teams and two people that can't, then I don't really think I can consider those players that can't. Uh, it's, it's the same. It's a sneaking thing, really. It's the exact same thing as sneaking. You just can't. I mean, sneaking's one of the best players in NA Dota as far as mechanical talent goes. And if he got kicked, like Aoi says, because of uh, schedule conflicts, then, I mean, obviously, you, you can't see how important that is. Going back to talking about how you improve and how do you get recognized, I actually want to ask you guys, specifically, Aoi, you were part of Pot and Bottom before you got picked up with Dignitas. Um, what did you guys, I mean, you were really good, you know, coming in before you got, right before you got picked up by Dignitas. How did you really get to the level you were at? I know, obviously, it's a lot of practice and, and hard work, but is there anything in specific that you could give pointers on? We just like. played and won stuff. That's how we, <laughs> like, really, there wasn't anything special. We made sure that we were practicing together and playing every single tournament that we could as a, like, we didn't get invited to the big ones off the bat, right? So you had to play, like, every single small one. We would go for those, like, $500 weekly cups, and eventually you get invited to, like, Joe and Dota Masters, stuff like that, and, like, I think Pro Dota 2, that was like our breakout basically, the Pro Dota 2 tournament, and that one was open to basically every single NA team. I want to ask you guys also, just uh, foregoing, you know, the entire team aspect, how do you really improve as an individual as well? Because I don't have any really sort of standpoint on this considering I don't play Dota, you know, competitively, but what do you do uh, is it all in-house leagues? Like, would you guys go and play XDL just to improve as much as possible? Uh, you know, would you just uh, try to find teams to scrim with? Or, or how do you really think you get your individual and mechanical skills up? And this is just a question for anybody, really. I mean, you guys play competitively, so. Um, have a mixture of watching and playing, I think. Like, try not... Obviously, play, 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 but... You sh if you actually want to play competitive, you, you should try and watch as many games as you can. And if you're like trying to emulate a certain player, you should like see his player perspective, see his decision making, and if he's like mid player, see how he lanes and stuff like that. I think it's the both of a mix. And obviously, AY might might say, might flame me, but I, I I think in house leagues are, in my opinion, better to get it better than I mean, it's a better place to get better individually than like matchmaking games all the time.
and that's mainly just because people try hard more and yeah it's hard to say but that's my opinion I think you're right. I think because in-house leagues, you're focused on doing your role specifically in order to help your team achieve that common goal of just winning. And, and just like in in-house leagues, it seems like it's a little bit more serious. The, you know, it's like the only captain's mode like uh, types of games that are actually really, really, really interesting and really like actually at a top level. I mean, top level, you know, to a certain extent. It depends on the players that you get in the in-house league. But Sam, I wanted to mention that when I watch your stream a lot of the time, you do a lot of uh, replay watching and just analyzing over games. Do you think that really helps your individual skill? I think that's, oh yeah, that's, I forgot to mention that, but that's up there with watching. Like you, if you play a game, there's no point, you play a scrim or you play a practice game, there's no point if you don't watch yourself play and see what mistakes you made. Because when you're actually playing, you don't see what you could have done better. Like, obviously as a team, we're all going to watch that third game or the second game to see what we could have done better and like, the laning phase or decision making and stuff, because it it all like there's there's no way you're you ever you were ever perfect in a game. And it's hard to see like when you're actually playing, because when you're playing like a match and stuff, it's you're like in the moment and you play differently than what you do in practice. And that's always like it, ha it has a bunch of stuff that like has like nerves, adrenaline, and, like all these kind of things. So I think pr especially if you like. If I if I play like a random scrim, I'm just as soon as I even like during the picks, I'll like just go back and watch, uh, like their movement and what he did or something like that, or like creep kills or some like. I think watching the replays is really important. It's up there with watching, uh, professional games if you're not a pro player. I mean, every time I watch you do that, it just it's so impressive. You just go over every detail in terms of team fights, in terms of you know you know. You made a mistake and stuff like that. I think it's absolutely incredible. But um, moving on, I want to ask you, Blitz, how you feel about improving? Because I know you do a lot of matchmaking. Um, do you think that you improve the same with matchmaking as you would if you played in-house leagues? You're like one of the. I think you play matchmaking more than like anybody I know. So like, Are you do you serious? think that? Like with all my accounts, like total, and I've had Dota since like August, like way back when. I only have like a thousand games. Still a lot. Like, we have something losses. to scoff at. That's like, how, Kurt, how many do you have? Probably double you. Total. Yeah, so I, I have like half as much considering the amount of time I've had the beta. But, okay, I understand your question though. Right. Like, so, like, nobody or sexy as a player. <laughs> and I'm, pro I'm pretty awful, but. Don't say that. Like, if you want to be like a high tier pub matchmaker like I am, um, just play a lot. Get to play with the right people, like people you enjoy playing with, and just well for me, what was important was um I was like I hit like a wall eventually, and a lot of it was just because um, I had like a really big ego because I won a few pub games over like a player or two, and I was like obsessed with that instead of actually like trying to improve. And a lot of people get into that rhythm, you know, where um, they're comfortable with their skill, and then they just assume that it doesn't improve from there. Like, they're the best player they can possibly be, and then they have to start playing competitive matches, like, right now. You know, every single person will say, like, most of the people you talk to, they have this, like, inflated self-worth as a player when they really just aren't ready to play, like, competitively. Like, Kurt and his teammates, the reason why they had success, like, so quickly was because they were all pretty much willing and ready to make the jump, right? They had, like, the skill, the time. But with a lot of teams, it's not like that. They're just not, like a lot of people have to, you have to learn to evaluate yourself as a player pretty objectively without, you know, looking at only the positives. Like, oh, I went, I played this other game and I went 30 and 3, why am I not playing for Dignitas? It's a good point. That, that sounds really about what I think too, because I think as long as you can play Dota and objectively analyze your own mistakes, it doesn't matter where you play. Because and... I, I don't know about... Kurt, you and I, we both never play like any real leagues, right? Yeah, like, I, no I, I freaking hate leagues. I think they're yeah, garbage. I, I started in THR, which was the only reason we played in that was because it had Hater. server hosting bots. I never played DXD or uh, what was the one on East called? The really big one? I have no idea. Uh, what is it, Sam? The really big DCL? league on East. DCL. I never touched DCL, IXDL, CNDL. Not a single game. I don't know. I, think, I just think that in-house leagues are so like the environment's so conducive for just blaming other people. 
And there are those people in the in-house leagues who literally just throw games and trophy. And I mean, they happen in pubs too. But at least in they're, pubs, they're you gonna can get banned, dude. Yourself. They're gonna get banned in in-house leagues. You know, are I, you serious? You know, can Jube? I say one thing? Jube? Did, is he banned? Oh, is he is he playing in every single? He actually league? got banned, dude. He actually got banned. For yeah, I league. got him banned, and he got back in, and I stopped playing. Which league? For uh, IX um, NADL. <laughs> yeah, but let me say one thing, dude. There's a new league called IXDL, and <laughs> Mike's in charge of this one. So, you got any how, problems, how does you uh, how does Mike? IX Mike behave in those games? Huh? How does, how does Mike he is one of the most no, managed if players if I've played. A new, if there's a new player in there, how how does IX Mike treat him? What? If if Listen, a new person comes in wanting to improve, how does how does Alex Mike treat him? Um. Oh, d d does he say like you're awful dude. and you're garbage? You should never play Dota again. Quit my league, and then he bans him. <laughs> oh wait, that that sounds really accurate. Oh dude, dude, this is this like was if I, I went in his league on an alternate account, I would probably get blamed by him. Dude, this was pre Alex Mike, dude. This was like Alex Mike, like last year. Alex Mike's changed, dude. Alex mm. Mike like, called me like, a retard once. Uh, <laughs> That's Really different. I don't know why you're hating. You watch the stream. He doesn't flame people like constantly. He, he, you, isn't there he like a question Twitter? marks them? He question marks them and says 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 why did you do this? But he treats them with a mannered way. You know? There's like a Twitter called. I don't think there's any like there are any Twitter Twitter account. players in house leagues now. Like I think you're so much better just playing with a group of friends and matchmaking, team matchmaking, or getting low level scrims. It doesn't matter. Like, than the in house league. I don't know, man. Those those in house leagues are so much more fun than matchmaking. But that's it's that's just my opinion. Because you especially I still, Do you see the client he made, dude? Like, <laughs> what an amazing client. Like, that that is the most amazing client. The, the the poor guy worked for six months to make that dude. Six months. Sound, the sound effects in that client scare the shit out of me every yeah, time I open every it up. Every time a game starts, the song pops. The one from Kesha. It freaked me out. I love it, dude. The one from what? Kesha? Kesha song. Yeah. <laughs> That's what he programmed in? Yeah, every time a game starts, like there's a Kesha song. Uh, and Spit made a Space Jam 1, I think, for this uh, for the package for it. It's pretty great. So it's like all Space, uh, space Jam sound effects and stuff like that. That's pretty great, but... That's IXDL, but, um, you know, you guys bring up some good points. So are you saying, Howie and Blitz, that you'll never play in another in-house league or that you're, like, against it or that, you know, maybe you'll think about it or, or I mean, do you really feel that strongly about in-house leagues in general? Um, uh, I actually talked to RTZ the other day, and he told me he actually took a break from in-house league. Uh, he took a break from C9DO. He said uh, he wasn't in the mood to play in-house leagues for maybe two weeks. And after that two weeks, he told me he lost to S4 in 10 one u one straight in a row. And, he, and after he came back to the in-house league, he played five more after playing five days of it. And then he beat S4 10 and through two. So mm. the facts that, are that, that... That does sound like the only factor that could have been in there. 100%. Definitely. Statistics. Yeah. They're there. Statistics this is lie. how logic works. But yeah, but are you guys you guys never gonna play in an in-house league, or, or are you waiting for an in-house league that's actually like not flaming, or or what? You're you're trying to mimic a, comp a competitive like you're try in-house leagues try to mimic a competitive environment with four random teammates every time, right? Based yes. on rating shuffling, I I don't think that works. I think it's way better to play with the same players again and again, and at least that way you can work on like teamwork synergy, like all the in house league players, I think their main weakness is that they can't play on a team together because they have no synergy, no teamwork, or anything. And that's because every single game they're playing with different people. It's true. That's, uh, that's definitely a good point. I mean, personally, I mean, I'm a caster, so take this to the grain of salt, but I find that it's much more like I'll go on to IXDL or I'll go on to C9DL and I'll play a game and I'll get flamed. I'm just like, all right, well, I didn't expect, you know, I didn't expect to do well. I'm a caster. I'm not really that great. So, but I can handle getting flamed every now and then. It's just enjoyable sometimes to go into an in-house game, but going and playing with my friends I think is a lot more entertaining um, and a lot more beneficial because, you know, we enjoy it, number one. Number two, we know each other. We've played with each other for, for a long time. So it's like I can see <coughs> – I, def I definitely can see the benefits of both in-house leagues and playing matchmaking. I just think that you need to do both in moderation. Like if you just play solely uh, in-house games, then I, 
like you're never going to be playing with the same people. Well, you will be, but it's going to be all random. So I don't know. That's just my thoughts on it. So honestly, I just want to say, as long as you're having fun playing Dota, then you're going to improve probably. I think. So if you really love in-house leagues and flame each other, and like my first game where I picked a carry in in-house league, I got flamed for picking a carry because apparently I'm incompetent, then you can play in-house leagues. I just think that the, a lot of the issue with in-house leagues that I've played in is that everyone assumes, well, I played in like, I played one DXD game, is that everyone just, because they're in the in-house league, there's like some like aura that they're like actually a good player, and I don't like that. I don't think it's conducive to getting better. Everyone just assumes know, because they're in the league. Like, they think they're better than you, right? Yeah. Uh, at and, the very least. Yeah, exactly. So that there's and without some, um, anything happening in the game. Like, I literally, yeah. like, my first game, I picked a hero, and then he's like, why are you picking that hero? I'm just like, because yeah. that, that's the hero I I've been I've been told in, like, random pub games, like, dude, are you in, are you vouched for NADL? And shit like that. And it matters dude, so little. It's probably because they the saw game. your lone build. Big flames. <laughs> I'm kidding, but, dude. I'm kidding. Like, um... Don't be mad. I thought you came <laughs> up with that build. I, yeah. I don't know. You, you didn't come up with that build, Sam? <sighs> oh, dude. Wait, where's, where's your mom, Blitz? She's getting <laughs> on. Someone, someone needs a hug. <laughs> someone needs a hug over here. Way to derail, Sam. Sam, it's I fine. was going to ask fine. you something really awkward Wait, earlier. No, 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 it's fine. And I everyone... completely avoided it. No, it's fine, like... UI. Everyone loses to EG. Oh, wait. Not me. What the hell's wrong with you? <laughs> dude, I'm sorry, dude. Hey, how is getting kicked from EG? Oh, that's man. exactly what I was going to ask you earlier, Kurt. <laughs> if that's how they uh, kicked him. If they had an shout open line Beatus. of communication. Shout, shout out to Beatus. <laughs> if there was... Were they, did they just go up to you, you and they're like, get thinks, did they do it with an open line of communication? Yeah, did they message you the entire time? Or was there a point where they were like, yo, we're going to kick you for Vidas. Here's how it's going to be. See, we didn't say that. So let's, well, why don't we let's move all be on. cool. Anyways, let me just finish making my point. I like public match ranking because you get the... Uh, the most amount of um, situations possible as well. Like when you play competitively, you only run into the same players, and they often play the exact same way. But if you're running into matchmaking, you might run into like a mid star that'll teach you something once in a while. So I'm a pretty big fan of matchmaking, and that's done. See, no derail. Well done, Sam. I'm just gonna stay neutral on the it's subject. Not. I like both. He's I like trying both. Trying to make Ey laugh, dude. He's been really edgy this episode. That's it. We lost to EG. Moving on. Uh, Chappie, I wanted to ask, speaking of this, um, when you're looking for players, either to form a team, would you be more interested in somebody that, you know, a team that's been doing really well? I think this is a good point because team matchmaking actually came out while we were on hiatus. Do you think that you could use team matchmaking uh, as a way to scout uh, new teams, up-and-coming teams, Chappie? Um, well... Only you could only use team matchmaking if the best teams were all using it. Otherwise, there's no gauge there, you know. Yeah. If you just pub stomp a bunch of non-professionals, then good for you, you know. So I mean, no TMM. I can't really use TMM unless all the pros are using it and they're not. So they're they're you know they're scrimming. That's a good point. I mean, there are some that use it, but I guess you need a you need everybody to really use it. You need all the big teams to use it. So, yeah, that's I don't know. Just it's tough. It's tough to find a team, an NA team right now, because that's what I was yeah, thinking. It's tough. Trust me, I've been looking for months and Dark Falco yeah. stack. What's what stack? Dark Falco stack. <laughs> that's Dark Falco's committed to getting. To being the best. Once you get an F4L life stealer, you guys can't lose. Oh, did you see um, Infinity's new team? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm watching everyone. They actually disbanded, bro. Did Infinity's they? Infinity's team? Or yeah, Arteezy's uh, team? I'll, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you exactly what happened. Infinity's team, it's Infinity and Beyond. Yeah. Yep. Well, I think it was two days ago. Uh, supposedly, Merlini and Select were in a pub together. And um, Merlini ganked Select's lane mid. And then Select got a first blood, but then um, Select solo died like two level, two minutes later on. The like it was like Tiny Select was Tiny and uh, the other guy was Puck. And Select got a first blood with Tiny, and then 
Merlini, I mean, because Merlini ganked his lane, and then Select died at, like, level 6 to him. And then all game, I watched the VOD, actually. Like, all game, Merlini was just, like, going ham on Select. It was just, like... He's like, I, I wish I so queued. Select just throwing and stuff like that. It was, and then wow. Claire points after that told me that because of that, because Select was like, fuck this, I'm not going to take this shit from this guy. And then Select was like, peace. And then, yeah, the team disbanded. So, <laughs> like the entire team. Reason. <laughs> the entire team disbanded. This was the nice. I, I swear that real? The reason. <laughs> I'm that not lying, dude. There is, there is the VOD, dude. There is the VOD. I have the VOD. Can you link it? Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, I have the VOD. I, what I, a I shame! The... That, that is a shame. That is a sh that is like my top prospect team. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, you just got found on Chappie. That sucks. I'm back to square one now. Oh man. Well. I mean, it's like I'm trying to find Mike. I mean, uh, Claire Boyne's linked me the VOD on Skype. I'm trying to find yours. That's hilarious. I'm sure a new one will form soon. In the meantime, Chappie, what do you think about the state of NA, NA Dota like compared to a few months ago? Do you think that it's it's actually starting to get better, or do you think that there's still a long way to go? Dude, NA Dota is at a disadvantage because the scene operates around Europe time. Can you imagine if Dota 2 operated around NA time? Like, there'd be way more, like, and people could play, you know, after they got off work, after they got off school. It would be much better, but it's... That's not how it is, um, at least not for a while. Okay, but, the uh, VOD is in uh, the VOD is in chat. If people, on I'm, not on, I'm not on Twitch, so you don't want to the chat. Don't them fiend. All right, saved it for later. Um, yeah, but, but no, yeah. You, you you bring up a good point because the entire yeah, it's just all European time. It's just like you come home, it's like you have to cast a game. All right, well, it's like at three o'clock. It's like well, I have to go to work and all that stuff like that. So it's just like you're playing on their you're playing their time period, and it's just it's rough because. Yeah, like you said, imagine if it was playing on the North American uh, time. We would have so many more teams and so many more teams, like, stable teams. I think that's the key, is stable teams. Yeah, there are teams popping up left and right that are good, but there's not really any stable teams out there right now. At least not from what I've seen, like, Infinity Beyond breaking up. Like, I thought that for sure could have been the next big team, but... Yeah, me too. Uh, what are you going to do? That's rude. I just still don't believe it. i got to watch this video. Sounds hilarious. <laughs> Really not. <laughs> All right. But I'm sure they'll reform anyways. That could have been a team boba. I mean, it's not I like think, the thing like is what uh, Merlini as a player is kind of like AI. I, I mean, they obviously when you play matchmaking, I think Select was like screwing around or something. I have no idea, but I saw like that exact time stamp, and I didn't see the parts before, but Claire told me that part. So. All right, let's move on. Let's talk about recent drafting trends and innovation in the scene. And this is something I want to get your opinion on, um, Aoi, because you and your team have run a lot of interesting picks over the past few days, and I think that really opened the floodgates for other teams to start doing uh, other innovative strats and stuff like that. Uh, uh, specifically, I think you guys are most known for, at least right now, the Warlock Inspector pickup that you guys had. I forget, it was, it was against No Tide Under, I believe, that you picked that up. And I want to... Get your thoughts on why you guys went down that route. I think a lot of people were confused about the Warlock pick, but he's, I think, it, Warlock is a really good hero right now. So, um, what do you think about uh, your recent innovation and in your drafting? Um, Dignitas jacked that for me, actually. <laughs> I have the VOD, guys. You can Google Go Supers Dignitas. What? Bobo Warlock. <laughs> anyways. <laughs> anyways. Um, sorry, I mean, the question is, like, why do we innovate? I guess so, yeah. Uh, I mean, we just pick to win every single game. Like, there are, like, these idiots on, like, Team Deca and Reddit are like, oh, Dignitas has these amazing picks game one, and in game two, they reverted to Kotal PL. What dick pods? And we're just gonna pick to win every game. And if we think Warlock Spectre gives us a better chance to win, because... Not only is it good picks, but as a surprise factor, teams don't know how to deal with it, then we're going to pick that. And there's also, like, comments on, like, team that could someone call me, like, playing Hipster Dota for going Armlet Silver. I just thought that it's the best for pushing towers if we're in a certain strategy. And so, I don't know. People think that teams don't pick to win, but that's all we do, really. 
So it's based on the other team's picks, what you think is going to work in that situation, rather than just saying, okay, well, we have an opportunity to try something out that, we, that we've been, like, storing away. Like, you don't, like, practice any sort of pocket pickups or anything like that, which, I mean, I, well, I wouldn't you, you know. you practice pocket picks to surprise the other team and win. You don't practice it for, like, oh, now everyone will love us or something, right? That, I don't know. Right. I just saw that a lot. Like people are, there's like this discussion. Like, are people like trying to innovate for the sake of innovation? And I, I don't think people do that. I think people just want to win. I, 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 I agree with Aoi. It was like I can put it on our perspective. When we were losing a lot, and we had like, these picks, people were just like saying, "Oh, we're we're doing hipster Dota, and we're trying to innovate too much." And then we start winning. They're like they compliment the picks, and it yeah. isn't because of the picks. It's the it's the execution. Like, the way we played those picks back then sucked, but we obviously, we practiced it and it got better. And those picks weren't because we picked just to innovate. It was, we had a, like, something in mind when we picked that. It was just to pick it for the hell of it, you know? Like, it's always as an execution. Any team can win with a certain strategy or certain hero if they have the good execution, if they have a good strategy behind it. So, Dignitas obviously had that with the Warlock pick, and it... It works for certain lineups and it doesn't work for certain other ones. Like, I think they did it really well versus NTH, and I think Fnatic U did it versus them. But Fnatic U was uh, they they split pushed them a lot, so they lost that game. I don't know how you can remind me of that well, one. Well, we we should have won that Fnatic game. I screwed that one up actually. Like that was just yeah. poor execution. I don't think it's a strategy. So. so you understand what I'm saying, right? Like yeah, it's the, like. The execution. Like Especially you guys, when, obviously, like, you guys played are... better. Sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. You guys obviously you played better in the strategy. Actually, I don't think you 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 guys were didn't do that well early in the strategy versus NTH. But then later on, the way your strategy worked, they kept on forcing themselves in five v five fights, and Fog got like really good rocks off and fatal yeah. bonds. Universe I mean, already had we were the getting advantage from that game. Loda had six times my CS at eight minutes or something. <laughs> So, I mean, and I think the point you make is, is this issue where, like, people are, like, flaming you for, like, new picks. And then, like, like you can't test everything out in scrim sometimes. Sometimes you just have to do it in a real match, too. It's, it's a bit different, like, matches and scrims. Because scrims, if you do a weird pick, sometimes the other team's like, oh, let's just let them do whatever and see how it goes, too. And then we'll pick something weird, too. I mean, you're not going to get any complaints from me as a caster. I, and anytime there's a ridiculous pickup, I'm I'm happy. I've i wanted I wanted Huskar to be in a cast that I've had for the longest time, but it's never going to happen, unfortunately. But um, oh, Fnatic beat us with Huskar in the scrim today. Really? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes, Huskar. He's making his way Maybe back. I should say that. Well, yeah, and I don't. Every, I, don't think... I think we Great. played like three teams already that just fucking that did the Warlock Spectre strat in scrims after you guys did it. It's pretty funny. These are paving the way. They're paving the way for Dota. That's pretty crazy, though. I, I just, I mean, don't get me wrong. I love, like, I have new picks, and I love new, like, when you guys did Clockwork, both uh, you guys, Dignitas, I, I saw Tides pick it up in a few games, and then when Team Liquid started playing Clockwork, that was, like, one of the best, like, I was just like, oh, my God, Clockwork's really good. And I had no idea it was coming. And, like, that's the, I think that's the best thing as a caster is just seeing, Seeing different pickups come out of no, like out of left field, you're like, oh, you know, you're just expecting normal things, the normal pickups, you know, whatever, Nick Sass and Templar, or, or um, excuse me, Codal and all that stuff like that. So when you get to see something new and refreshing, it certainly not only excites the fans, it excites the casters, it excites the, the community. So, I mean, more props to you guys to get, you know, heroes that work that aren't played so often. I think that's really, I think the fun part about Dota is that you never know what you're going to get in the game, which is why I keep coming back to it. So that's just my opinion anyway, but. Um, right now, I actually wanted to ask about, you know, are there any other trends, though, going on in drafting? Like, what I've seen as a caster is that the first ban phase is more often than not, like, temp, uh, excuse me, Nyx Assassin, the Codal, the Wisp, and, like, the Bat Rider. You know, those four heroes. It switches occasionally, but those four heroes are banned out instantaneously for the most part, and Gyrocopter is always, like, first pick now. Uh, do you think that that's the way it's going, or or... You know, is it starting to change a little bit, or is that is that sort of metagame here to stay? Anybody? Uh, I think the gyro trend has to do a lot with how teams play in the Western scene. 
It's like um, it's a hero that's hard to gank. As in, he has a lot of counter gank potential. Like if you go on him and screw up, the amount of damage that Rocket Barrage does is is really imbalanced. And it's funny seeing like when people realize this, how they they were using do, they were doing the one one four build, but now everyone's just doing the four one four build, or just the four zero four one build. But uh, that hero has a lot to do with how the teams play. Like, you can do stacks with it. You can farm. You can he can be. You can even play him as support, and he still farms well as a support. He has like a lot of kill potential. So, it has a lot to do with just how teams play and how to utilize these heroes. Like, um, I talked a lot with Brax Whoa. about Gyro, and he he says the hero isn't that strong. Like they've practiced it before versus the Chinese teams, and it doesn't. It's not as effective. So I don't know how true that is, or how like they play it or how differently, but obviously that's merit because it's like the Chinese teams are playing it. So it just the, I think the it's some heroes fit the Western teams better right now. So this was my opinion. Any other thoughts on current trends in drafting? You guys want to talk about strategy or anything like that? Anything you've seen that was interesting to you at all? Um, I don't know. From what I've seen, I've seen a bunch of different things, but gyro capture seems to be played like a lot. Yeah, I've I've got a feeling that it's not going to work a hundred percent of the time, and definitely not when it gets to the Chinese scene. And I think that they'll figure a way out to you know deal with it. On top of that, I just like from my perspective, I've seen gyro picked up a lot lately, and um, you know, even over like Nakes or Luna at some point. So, um. Well, I, like, think... I just want to say that just because the Chinese don't like a hero, it doesn't mean it's a really good hero. I, I want to point out that before TI, I think if any of the Western teams scrimmed, like, I think that if none of the Western teams scrimmed the Chinese teams, the Chinese teams would have been way worse off than the Western teams, actually. Like, I agree. Uh, like, IG store shit, and they won TI, <laughs> like, actually. <laughs> so. Like, some of our strats. From our scrims, like I don't know, it wasn't all our strats, but like a lot of our play in our scrims versus them, it like we actually like crushed some of the Chinese teams with it, and it's just a play style thing. I don't think that Gyro has to be some worth a TO just because LGD said that it's not useful, and same with like, Wisp, like Wisp isn't picked in China either, and like Lone Druid, I think is still top pick there. It's like it's just a different scene, and I don't think one is necessarily better than another. And even if they clash and the Chinese come on ahead. I don't even think that necessarily means that the Chinese picks are just superior because I think mechanically the Chinese players will always have an edge. I agree. Um, but I think that about wraps it up for the discussion tonight. Gone out for about an hour now. So we'll get through the, uh, the shout-out phase, of course. So um, uh, let's we'll start with you um, and give them your Twitter and shout-outs, any shout-outs that you might have. Uh, Twitter's at Blitz underscore Dota. Um, shout out to the guy who paid me five dollars to eat a hot dog on webcam. <laughs> that what actually point? happened. What? Um, yeah. Did you a eat weird. a hot dog here? No, no, no. Just like randomly. Uh, I'll I'll tell that story some other time. Um, that but that paid for my meal the other day. <laughs> shout out to. Um, and I don't know anybody that watches my stuff. I don't really care if you flame me. If you're watching, I guess that counts. Shout out to Kren. And I think that about wraps it up. Sam? Shout out to uh, Team Liquid and its sponsors. And then shout out to my team. And yeah, follow me on Twitter at Liquid Boba. All right, Kurt. Uh, shout out to Team Dignitas and our main sponsors, Antec, Alienware, Intel, and now Kinks and HyperX, and all the other ones. And you can follow me on Twitter at AO2000, also stream at twitch.tv slash AO2000. And Boogaloo is begging for a shout out, so we should definitely ignore him. All right, I'm down with this. All right, Chappie, go ahead. Shout out to NA Dota. Um, you guys need to put a team together so I can sponsor you. Shout out to IX Mike 88. Uh, my team, who's 23 and 0, GoT13. Um, that's about it. Thanks for having me on. And you can find me on Twitter at MontDota2. 
And shout out to Spitwad, and that's all I got. So thanks for joining us, guys. I hope you guys have a great night. See you all later.